Detention is a horror adventure game that was released by Red Candle Games. It follows the story of a girl who has been plunged into a desolate and horrific world with little to no explanation. The game is filled with Taiwanese folklore and history, all wrapped around the story of this one girl. Now, before we move farther, this is a spoiler warning. There is no way that I can seriously engage with this work without giving information from all throughout the story. If you want to experience it yourself, then turn off the video and play the game. It is worth it. What we will be focusing on here is the visual aspect of the storytelling throughout Detention, as it is a brilliant example of how game visuals can tell a story. The first thing to understand is that much of the visual storytelling done throughout Detention tells a story that otherwise cannot be conveyed. The player is a character who has suffered from trauma-induced amnesia from the experience of betraying her school to the authorities. The story occurs in the character's own mindscape as she tries to come to terms with her actions. Much of the visual storytelling is expressing the nature and extent of the trauma that the character is facing without ever having to actually come face to face with it. With that in mind, the Lingering, the first enemy that the player meets in the game, are a prime example of how the character's subconsciousness is brought out through the visuals. The Lingering is depicted as a schoolgirl, similar to Rei, the main character, who is stuck in a ghostly limbo. The similarities between Rei's model and the Lingering are no accident. The importance of this is twofold. Firstly, it places the Lingering as a representation of the classmates that Rei condemned by ratting out. Very early in the story, the player can begin to parse that the students have not simply escaped, but are in a much worse position, and that there may be some animosity towards Rei regarding this. The Lingering shows that animosity by the fact that the Lingering attacks Rei. Given that this is in Rei's mind, their animosity is not simply a byproduct of their behavior, but something that Rei's subconscious mind thought was appropriate for the classmates to feel, and thereby also for the Lingering to feel. The second point about the Lingering's appearance is how similar they are to Rei herself. By having the first enemy in the game look so similar to the player, the game brings up the question of why a depiction of Rei would be attacking her. The answer can begin to form for the player, but is best understood when put within the context of the ending, where the mindscape and narrative is revealed to the player. The Lingering stands as a metaphor for the psychological struggle that is being played out throughout the story. Mei is constantly being attacked by the realizations of her own actions, the lingering being the physical form of those realizations, and she has been trying to sidestep and also avoid them in her mind. Moving away from the lingering, there are two scenes related to Rei's family that really bring the cleverness of the visual storytelling into full view. The first of these scenes is the fight between Rei's parents. This scene is played beautifully, with neither of the parents being shown while still conveying the severity of the event. Beyond that, there is a metaphoric element to the scene. The purpose of even showing the fight is to convey what Rei's home life was like. When the player compares the previous image of the parents sitting sadly around their table with the image of no one fighting, it conveys a deeper message about the family strife in Rei's household. The ruptures in the family occur out of her sight. Her parents fight when she's not there, being conveyed by the fact that Rey cannot see her parents in the fight scene. However, the semblance of a unified family is trying to be conveyed, as shown by her parents at the dinner table. Through simply omitting characters in a scene, the developers expressed a far more complex idea than would be expressed otherwise. The other scene in question is the actual reveal of the father's affair. It is never stated directly, but is heavily implied by notes up to this point that Rey's father is cheating on her mother. The scene that states directly that this is the case does so with no words. Instead, the parents' bedroom is shown draped in lingerie with Rey's mother nowhere in sight. It was certainly an impactful scene and conveyed what would commonly be communicated through words. In fact, the visual storytelling is so strong in this scene that I would venture to say that any person who sees the scene without context could guess what it was about. Just from these few examples, it can be seen exactly how powerful the visual imagery is in detention. Visual storytelling is often quite difficult to do well. Dialogue is so commonly the king of story, when visual imagery could be much more powerful. So, with that in mind, how can a developer set up visual imagery of the magnitude that Detention succeeded in? The first thing that a game needs in order to pull off visual storytelling is to have a clear aesthetic. Another game that has similar levels of storytelling is Psychonauts. 
The game succeeded in expressing the mental issues of each character that the player has to deal with by giving every mindscape its own specific aesthetic that related to the character. Detention does a similar thing in that it maintains a clear semi-horror folklore aesthetic. By creating that solid aesthetic, the developer is stating a clear intentionality in their visuals, and also setting a norm by which the player can compare. The intentionality is fairly clear. A garbled aesthetic could cause important visual aspects to be brushed off as accidents or aesthetic mistakes by the developer. A clear aesthetic shows that everything is there for a purpose. The latter aspect, giving the player a norm, is also key. Detention has its horror folklore aesthetic, but it deviates from it on a few occasions. One is the use of bright colors in the scene where the father's cheating is revealed. The other is when Ray experiences the cinema. Both are examples of where otherwise dark and drab aesthetics are brushed off in favor of a colorful aesthetic. They both express a feeling of indulgent pleasure one in the form of lust and the other in a combination of lust and forbidden knowledge. Either way, the emotions are expressed so clearly because the visuals are juxtaposed to a backdrop of fear and dread in the drab aesthetic. The visual opposites, bright colors versus dark, mirror the emotional opposites, happiness versus fear, that are being conveyed through the scenes. Creating the visual norm, which is mostly done through consistent aesthetics, can create a tool that the developer can use to express visual storytelling. The visual storytelling in Detention is an example of how more games should strive to convey their stories. Gaming has a variety of means to tell stories, from dialogue to visuals to mechanics. To really see the pinnacle of this medium, all of these aspects have to be brought into play. At least for now, we have a grand example of visual storytelling to examine. Certainly there is more in detention than I have pointed out, but at least it's a start. Thanks for watching and, of course, enjoy the rest of your day.